You ever wonder what it's like to have a real Coco Goat on your team? Well, you're in luck, because today we're going to be taking a look at Ganyu. We're going to be doing a full character breakdown as of what we know already. Again, like usual, none of this is confirmed, so take all of this with a grain of salt. All the information used in this video is by Honey Hunter World, so give them credit. None of this is mine, I'm just uh, reiterating it so it'll be easy for you guys. But enough of that, let's just jump right into it. As per usual, we're going to be taking a look at a level 80, talent level 6 Ganyu. We're running 8643 HP. 295 base attack, 556 defense, and 28.8 increased cryo damage. We're going to be using the jumps from the cryo regis vine. Don't know how to pronounce these flowers, but they're on your screen. <laughs> Nectar from the little flower guys, teaching of diligence. To get talents past level 6, we're going to be using Shadow of the Warrior, which drops from Child, so make sure you do that every week. Now what we're really looking into are the skills. For Ganyu, we're going to have a basic 6 attack strike, 46%, 51, 66, 66, 70, and 83. Now the cool thing about Ganyu is her charge. She has her basic charge, of course, the cryo damage, but what makes her crazy is her second charge. Upon hitting your shot, you also get AoE damage, which is 304% on the talent level 6. That's kind of clean, I'm not going to lie. So every time you have a max charge shot, you're going to be doing 179 plus the 304% AoE damage, which I think it, it's pretty juicy, man. That's uh, definitely something to keep note of. Now there's different applications that you can use with the AoE charge shot. Usually charge shots kind of suck, single target, and it only does so much damage that can be out damaged by other characters. But with the AoE, it allows for more uses. So for example, you can use Venti's Zarya ult, put them in the Cyclone and just shoot at them, so that's a good use for that. Same thing with Sucrose, drag them into the center and then shoot your arrow. Now another thing she could apply this to is her second skill, which we're going to take a look at right now. Trail of the Quillen, 10 second cooldown, creates an Ice Lotus taunting nearby enemies. The Ice Lotus HP is relative to your max HP by 168%, so pretty much more than your max HP. Lasts for 6 seconds and after the 6 seconds or it breaks, you do 184% damage. Now the good thing about this is you can pop this down and of course it's going to taunt nearby enemies but it's also going to drag them all into the center and again that allows you to do some of that AoE damage with their second charge shot so you really want to use this as much as you can. Find different various ways to combo it together. We're going to take a look at different weapons and all that stuff later because there's a particular weapon that I think would actually work really good on her. <laughs> but aside that, the Lotus is also good just as a utility just to have people fight something else while you're doing whatever you're doing or you're just smacking them while they're, I don't know, looking at a pretty flower. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. As for Celestial Shower, this one is a pretty straightforward move. Puts a zone for 15 seconds and it drops icicles. It's pretty similar to the Abyss Mages, how they drop the little icicles. It's pretty much like that. It just creates a zone and then enemies within it just take icicle damage. 98% each, 15 seconds. So that's actually, that's pretty long. 5 second downtime if you have 100% uptime on the cooldown. 60 energy, so fairly decent. Nothing too short, too long. The thing I like about Ganyu is how user friendly her kit is. There's not really anything super technical. You know, it's like her normal attack is just boom, big AoE damage. Her first ability is like boom, Ice Lotus, taunt enemy, do damage. And then her ult is just boom, big damage zone. There's not really any technical sides to it, so I think this is really good for players who want to kind of just have an easy character to mess around with. So I kind of see her in a couple different roles. You could use her for utility if you want to maximize the S1 ability. You can also use her as her main DPS because the Frost Flake arrow does do a lot of damage and could be your main source of damage. There's a bunch of different elemental reactions that you could combine with her. For example, Melt, Freeze, or Superconduct. So finding different characters to kind of work around her AoE or her Taunt or her Zone even sets her up for different positions, but typically I think you should probably use her as damage. With that aside, we're going to be taking a look at the passives and constellations. Now for her passives, this is where things get a little juicy. Of course, we got the refund, 50% ores from crafting bows, that's kind of, eh, you know, it's, it's cool and all, but after firing a frost flake arrow, increase the crit rate for future frost flake arrows by 20%. Now, that's kind of clean, just a flat 20% increase in crit rate for your frost flake arrows. There's a bunch of different ways, especially for cryo users, to get a lot of crit rate without having to build artifact main stats and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at artifact builds in a second, but this just makes it even easier to have high crit rate, because cryo characters already got crit rate easy. Like, they got it, on, they, they have easy mode on building crit rate, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. There's a particular artifact set that just came out. You can get up to 40% increased crit rate for free, literally on fighting a frozen enemy. That That's it, but we'll get into that in a bit. For her next passive, we have 
Celestial Shower gives 20% cryo damage bonus within the AoE. So if you have a cryo team, just easy damage. Or if you're just using Ganyu, just free 20% cryo damage bonus. But again, Ganyu's kit is pretty basic and very user friendly for the new players of course it's not a sword play style it's a bow but ganyu's character again it's pretty simple and pretty easy to understand that's the best part about it it's very user friendly to new players who don't want to do all this technical stuff for example tartaglia he just has all these different cooldowns and you know normal attack and bow switch you know all that all that random stuff it's like this one damage buff damage more damage create you know it's like it's pretty easy to understand as for her constellations we have enemies damaged by frost flake arrows have cryo resistance decreased by 15 percent for six seconds and you get two energy per frost flake arrow now the two energy that's just just free free energy recharge <laughs> personally i think it's just like a little extra added bonus for damage is it really needed Nah, it's not really a big game changer, but you know, it's it's nice to have. It doesn't hurt to have it. If you're building a cryo only team, then I see this would have some good benefits as the cryo resistance it helps out pretty much your whole entire team. As for the second constellation, Trail of the Quilling gets a plus one charge, so you have extra taunt lotuses. Makes it easier. Of course, for C3 and 5, you have the plus three on the elemental burst and skill, so remember the burst is first and then the skill, instead of it usually being the other way around. As for C4, enemies within Celestial Shower take 5 to 25% increased damage, plus 5% every three seconds and the last three seconds after they leave the zone. So again, this would just be extra damage. Overall, it'll help your team globally rather than just her. So far as we're looking, her constellations seem like it not only helps her, but the entire team. So that's pretty good, pretty good. As for her C6, after using the Trail of the Quillen, the next Frost Flake Arrow within 30 seconds does not require charge. I mean, yeah, it's cool. Is it C6 worthy? Not sure. Because whenever I think of Constellation 6 5 stars, I'm thinking that's like a thousand dollars or like some way up in the hundreds you know more than 500 at least or you need some god luck if someone were to dump in that much money i'm expecting something crazy like for example i like to use child all the time as an example the child his c6 literally makes his stance permanent because it just resets every time he uses his ult which is easy his ult is easy to get that's c6 worthy in my opinion but this yeah it's cool no charge on the frost flake arrow but I don't think the charge is necessarily an issue. Personally, I don't think her constellations are worth it. They're nice little buffs, they help out with damage, but I don't think they're any real game changers. Just little passive support type things. Now let's take a look at weapons and artifacts. I had one thing in mind when it came to, to these. Literally just damage, 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 damage. For the two weapons, we have the Skyward Harp and the Amos Bow. Skyward Harp for the crit rate, Amos Bow for the attack and increase normal attack and charge attack damage. Uh, honestly, I think Amos Bow would probably be better in this case. Skyward Harp is good. It's not a bad option. Increased crit damage and crit rate is always good to have. So honestly, whatever 5 star you have, go with it. If you have both, it's really a debate on whether you want to get that extra 20% crit damage and crit rate, or you want to have just straight up high attack stat and increased normal attack. Personally, I would go for the Amos Bow because I feel like the normal and charge attack increase will get you more value as crit rate is relatively easy to get on cryo characters and crit damage. I mean, 20% is pretty good. Not gonna lie, 20% is pretty good. But you can't go wrong with either options. You'll get some good damage in the end. As for four stars, we have Viridescent Hunt and Stringless. So Viridescent Hunt is the battle pass weapon because one, you get the crit rate, so you can build crit damage on your artifacts. Your normal and aim shots have a 50% chance to generate a cyclone attracting nearby enemies, dealing damage and the effect occurs once every four seconds. Pretty much every time you use your normal attack, like not even, not even focusing on the extra damage, just the cyclone effect, putting enemies into like a little area, I think that's gonna bring some value, especially with her Frost Flake arrow, just having the Cyclones group everybody up, especially if there's a bunch of people around. You wouldn't have to have a Sucrose or a Venti or anything like that. She could just do this ho whole thing by herself. This would be a really good option. As for Stringless, I'm mainly looking at this for the elemental skill and elemental burst damage. Uh, elemental mastery if you're making a melt team or a superconduct team or just things with elemental mastery but personally i think the top three is probably your better options messenger is for the three star if you don't have access to any of these if you do get any of these i'd say replace it immediately now for the artifact set the blizzard strayer god tier for cryo characters like honestly this is way too good so of course we got the 15 percent increased cryo damage bonus but this crit rate plus 20 for enemies infected by cryo that's too good that is too much value not only that frozen enemies get plus 40 percent crit rate so like in total so so literally base ganyu fighting a frozen enemy you'll have 45 percent crit rate now what's a good character to apply frozen mona jingchu mona could apply wet 
Jingqiu will just have the little swords applying water damage and Ganyu will just smack him in the face with that frost flake arrow and boom 40% crit rate. Honestly, I'd just go for a 4 set. Just call it a day. If you don't have any good rolls on Blizzard Strayer set, we have Wanderer's Troop as our next option. Mainly for the 4 piece, the plus 35% increase normal and charge attack damage, not so much the Elemental Mastery. But if you do have somebody that applies Fire or Electro, then Elemental Mastery won't be too much of a bad idea as you'll still be getting some value with the Elemental Reactions. So if you already have good rolls on Troop, you could put this on in the meantime, but again, I'd still, I'd still go for this. <laughs> Another option is Noblesse Oblige if you want to kind of go for a semi-support. 4-piece would give the 20% increased attack and of course the more damage on her ultimate. So this is if you want to build her kind of like a support character. Martial Artist is our 4-star pick as it increases your normal attack damage by 40% if both of these are up. You got the 15% base and you have the 25% on elemental skill. So that's all for the artifact and weapon sets. Personally, I'd probably go for Viridescent or Amos Bow, but I, I really think Viridescent will be good because of the Cyclone. I just think it has way too much value putting everybody into the middle. Amos Bow would probably have more damage output being 1A5 star as well as having the attack and normal attack increase. Viridescent, I feel like it would be good against domains or spiral abyss as it's going to group up all the enemies if you're just trying to clear big waves of people this would probably be better but in terms of just general flat damage amos bow would probably do more as for the main stats and substats we have attack percent on the timepiece crowd damage bonus on the cup and crit damage on the mask now i purposely didn't put crit rate here because if you had the blizzard strayer set on top of gone you should straight up passive increasing your crit rate by 20 percent on your frost fire arrows you don't really need to build it at all. Honestly, I don't even know if you want to build crit rate as a substat, but I mean you could. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have it. As for substats, we have crit rate, crit damage, attack, energy recharge, and HP. The reason why we put HP is just so you can have a little more extra Lotus Health. Another option, you could probably put Elemental Mastery if you want to work with other elements. If you have somebody on your team that can just apply fire and you just switch back to Ganyu, pop the Frostfire arrow, easy, easy damage. Easy melt. I'm thinking about having maybe a Zhangling ult, pop the pyro on everybody, shoot the frost flake arrow. I just think Ganyu is going to be a great, great option for fighting any AoE type situations. But when she does come out, make sure you guys check her out because bow play styles are not for everyone. Same thing with book characters. Bow's books, they play completely differently than a typical sword, spear, or claymore user. So if this is your first bow main DPS, make sure you check her out to make sure you like it because again, pulling for five stars are gonna be expensive if you don't have your pity or anything like that. In conclusion, Ganyu, great at AoE, great at just straight doing damage, Kit is super easy to understand. She has a bunch of different weapon options. The way I'd assume you'd be playing her is only using the Frost Flake arrows. I don't see any time you should be using her six combo attack or her first charge. I think Frost Flake arrow is the only thing you should be using out of her normal attack. She has some nice utility with her Taunt Lotus and a pretty simple ultimate just doing some AoE damage. So should you summon for Ganyu? Like I always say, what does your team need the most? If it's a main DPS, make sure you like playing the bow playstyle because they are different. I think she's a very easy character to understand and pick up. Hopefully you guys enjoy. I'm excited for Ganyu. Not sure if I'm going to be pulling for her as I am currently out of funds because of Albedo. <laughs> but with that out the way, hopefully you guys enjoy. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.